Welcome to Cambridge, one of the most beautiful and historical cities in the UK, with one of the top universities in the world. The University of Cambridge dominates that reputation, but there's more to this magical place than high society education. If you're looking for your next destination, look no further than Cambridge in the UK. In this video, we'll be exploring this charming city. You'll be treated to impressive college buildings, picturesque draws along the River Cam, and the opportunity to try punting. Satisfy your cultural cravings with numerous museums and art galleries and find tranquility in the city's beautiful parks and gardens. Whether you're a history enthusiast, an academic adventurer or simply seeking a leisurely day or a long weekend getaway, Cambridge has something to offer for everyone. So let's get started. Number 1 King's College The University of Cambridge, founded in 1209, is made up of 31 individual colleges. Each college operates independently, with its own staff, facilities, accommodation and governors. However, all the colleges are part of the University of Cambridge. One college you cannot miss when visiting Cambridge is King's College, founded by King Henry VI in 1441. It is located on King's Parade, right in the heart of the city. You can't miss it. The stunning architecture of King's College will leave you in awe when you see it for the first time. It is famous for its beautiful buildings, fascinating history and the renowned King's College Chapel. To visit King's College Chapel and its beautiful grounds, you need to purchase a ticket. You can either buy online or simply visit the King's College Visitor Centre on King's Parade, which is conveniently located opposite the main entrance of the college. As you enter the University of Cambridge, you'll feel like you've travelled back in time. The old buildings and beautiful architecture will amaze you. It's a unique experience that captivates you with history, beauty and the vibrant spirit of student life. One of the main attractions that will capture your attention is a magnificent King's College Chapel. Construction of the chapel started in 1446 and completed in 1515. This stunning masterpiece of Gothic architecture is truly impressive. Inside the chapel, you'll be amazed by the largest fan vault ceiling in the world, decorated with intricate details. The chapel is also known for its 26 beautiful stained glass windows, which display vibrant colours and exquisite craftsmanship. Over the altar, you can admire Rubens' famous masterpiece, Adoration of the Magi, painted in 1634. Another remarkable experience is attending the even song at King's College Chapel, and the best part is that it is free. It's a wonderful opportunity to immerse yourself in the chapel's serene and beautiful surroundings. After exploring King's College Chapel, take a relaxing walk to the college grounds. The college grounds are covered with stunning wildflower meadows, creating a beautiful landscape that seamlessly blends with the surrounding architecture. The combination of vibrant blossoms and remarkable buildings truly make the grounds a sight to admire. Cross the bridge for picturesque views of the River Cam and watch the punters on their boats. You will also be able to see Clare's College next to King's College and catch a glimpse of the countryside in the heart of Cambridge. Number two, explore other colleges. Cambridge is home to a variety of fascinating colleges, each with its own distinctive charm and historical importance. While King's College, with its magnificent chapel, is a must visit, the city offers an abundance of other intriguing colleges waiting to be discovered. Here are a few recommendations to start with. Trinity College, established in 1546 by King Henry VIII, it holds a special connection to Isaac Newton who studied them. To honour his legacy, a descendant of the original Newton apple tree is located on the college grounds. It also houses the famous Wren Library, which holds a vast collection of rare books and manuscripts. Trinity College has produced 34 Nobel Prize winners and is a must-visit destination in Cambridge. Next to Trinity College, you'll find St John's College. St John's College is known for its beautiful Bridge of Sighs and stunning chapel. Queen's College, founded in 1448, is located on both sides of the River Cam, with a famous mathematical bridge connecting the two halves. Its old court is an architectural gem, and the college gardens offer tranquil riverside views. 
This college offers a captivating glimpse into Cambridge rich heritage. With a total of 31 colleges making up the University of Cambridge, there's a lot of colleges to explore. The choice of which college to visit ultimately depends on your personal interests and preferences, but hopefully this has given you an insight into some of the colleges. Number three, the Mathematical Bridge. While walking along the backs of the colleges in Cambridge, you'll come across several historical bridges connecting both sides of the River Cam. One of the most recognisable landmarks is a wooden bridge, also known as a Mathematical Bridge, outside of Queen's College. What makes this bridge so captivating is its unique design. It may appear curved and arched, but here's the fascinating part, it's actually made entirely of straight timbers. This wooden bridge is renowned for its intriguing design, constructed entirely out of straight timbers but forming an arch shape. The mathematical bridge was designed by William Etheridge in 1748 and built by James Essex in 1749. There are two common myths about the bridge. One is that Sir Isaac Newton designed it, but he passed away in 1727, so he had no involvement. Another myth is that the bridge was built without nails and bolts, but that is not true. You can visit the Mathematical Bridge in three ways. One option is to pay a small fee and enter through the visitor's entrance on Queen's Lane off Silver Street. This allows you to cross the bridge and explore Queen's College campus. Another option is to take a guided punting tour that passes under the Mathematical Bridge. Or you can enjoy a free view of the Mathematical Bridge from Silver Street. From there you can watch people punting on the river and soak in the lively atmosphere of the area. Number four, punting. One of the most popular activities to do in Cambridge is to go punting. The River Cam goes to the heart of Cambridge, passing many historical sites along the way, and one of the best ways to see this city is by boat punting. If you're not sure what punting means, punts are long, flat-bottomed wooden boats, pushed along by someone called a punter. The punter stands at the back and pushes the boat along with a long pole. This activity is called punting. During a punting tour, your punting guide will not only navigate the boat but also share interesting stories and historical facts about Cambridge University, the colleges and the landmarks you pass along the way. You'll see sites like the Bridge of Sai, the Mathematical Bridge and the Backs, which refers to the backs of the colleges that are lined up along the River Cam, which includes the likes of King's, Clare, Queen, Trinity, St John's and many more colleges. It's a leisurely and relaxing experience where you can sit back, enjoy the atmosphere and take in the sights. Remember, you can ask as many questions as you like. So, you'll leave with a newfound knowledge of this beautiful and historical city. There are many different types of punting tours available in Cambridge. Private tours, shared group tours or for those feeling adventurous, there's also the option to hire your own punt. This allows you to steer the boat yourself, but keep in mind that it can be more challenging than it appears. It takes practice to manoeuvre the punt smoothly and many first-time punters find themselves spinning the boat round or even falling in the water. There is no one specific location for punting tours in Cambridge. Instead, there are different areas along the River Cam where you can start your punting experience. Most commonly, people go to one of the punting areas and buy tickets from the punting station. You can also buy tickets from the tourist information centres or online. Prices vary depending on the time of the year and where you buy your ticket. A punting tour lasts about 45 to 50 minutes. Having said that, punting isn't for everyone. You can still enjoy the experience by standing on a bridge and watching the action or, if you're looking for something completely different, take a walking tour and explore the city on foot. Number five, walking tours. During our recent visit to Cambridge, we decided to take a walking tour to learn more about the city's historical landmarks and attractions. It turned out to be a fantastic choice. The tour guide was incredibly knowledgeable and passionate about the city, which made the experience even more enjoyable. As we walked through the charming streets of Cambridge, it felt like I was stepping back in time. The tour took us to famous colleges and other significant sites, and the guide shared fascinating stories about their history. It was amazing to imagine the great minds that once studied and walked those same paths. What I liked about the walking tour was that there were different options to choose from. Some tours provided a general overview of the city, whilst others focused on specific subjects or colleges. 
What impressed me the most was the efficiency of the tour. In just one and a half to two hours, we covered a significant amount of ground and learned so much about Cambridge rich heritage. I noticed that walking tours were quite popular in Cambridge, as I saw many other groups exploring the city alongside us. All in all, the walking tours in Cambridge was a wonderful way to explore the city's history and landmarks. Having said that, Cambridge is a small city that you can explore simply by walking around yourself. With a basic understanding of the places you want to visit, you can enjoy the historical ambience and discover interesting sites at your own pace. Just grab a map and you're good to go. Number 6. Corpus Clock When you visit Cambridge and wander down Trumpington Street in the city centre, you'll probably catch a glimpse of something rather bold and unusual in the window and thought, what is that? Well, it's called the Corpus Clock. The Corpus Clock made its first appearance in 2008. It is located at the junction of Bennett Street and Trumpington Street, looking out over King's Parade. The face of the clock is plated in pure gold and the ripple design alludes to the Big Bang, with a centre considered to show the beginning of time. The grasshopper that sits atop is actually a chronophage, which means time eater, devouring each minute as it passes with a jaw that snaps shut. Although it's a clock, the clock has no digital numbers or hands, making it difficult on first glance to be able to tell the time. However, there are three LED rings which show the hours, minutes and seconds. When an hour strikes, there is no chime. Instead, passers-by will hear the shaking of chains and a hammer hitting a wooden coffin, a rather morbid sound. It represents a passing of time, which ultimately leads to death. This is reinforced by the Latin inscription which sits underneath the clock meaning the world and its desires pass away. This unusual timepiece was invented, designed and given to Corpus Christi College by Dr John C. Taylor. It's a beautiful addition to the city centre, admired both by residents and visitors. Number 7. Museums During our visit to Cambridge, we explored some of the city's remarkable museums. Cambridge has an incredible selection of museums, many of which are found right here in the centre of the city, making it easy to walk between them. Here are the ones we visited. The Fitzwilliam, the most well-known museum. The Fitzwilliam has a world-renowned collection of over half a million beautiful works of art, masterpiece paintings and historical artefacts. This museum is spectacular and you can easily spend hours exploring it. With changing exhibitions, there's always something new to discover. Plus, the stunning architecture of the building adds to the overall experience. It's an amazing place to explore and we highly recommend it to anyone visiting Cambridge. Another one of Cambridge most popular museums is the University Museum of Zoology, which houses one of the largest and most important natural history collections in the UK. The museum is one of Cambridge's major attractions, displaying thousands of incredible specimens spanning the entire animal kingdom. It's a great place for all ages to explore and discover the wonders of the animal kingdom. We also visited the Sedgwick Museum of Earth Sciences, the oldest of the University of Cambridge Museums, established in 1728. The museum is dedicated to showcasing the wonders of our planet's history. It has an incredible collection of rocks, minerals and fossils on display. The exhibits took us on a journey through time, allowing us to see ancient fossils and learn about the evolution of life on Earth. Next to Sedgwick Museum of Earth Sciences is the Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology. It is conveniently located, allowing visitors to easily explore both museums in one visit. In addition to the museums I've mentioned, there are several other exciting museums in Cambridge that you can explore, such as the Polar Museum, which focuses on polar regions and their significance in global history and climate. Whipple Museum, which houses a collection of scientific instruments and artefacts, showcasing the development of science over the centuries, and Kettle Yard, that showcases modern and contemporary art. The choice of which museum to see depends on your personal interests and what captures your curiosity. Number 8. Great St Mary's Church, also known as the University Church of Cambridge, is a must-visit for its stunning panoramic views of the city. Located at the north end of King's Parade and backing on to Market Square, it is in the heart of Cambridge. The church dates back to 1205 and it is even older than Cambridge University. 
In the past, it served as the main university building where Oxford scholars gave lecturers and awarded degrees. When scholars arrived in Cambridge over 800 years ago, Great St Mary's Church became the first home of the university. The bell summoned students to lectures and debates and ceremonies took place here. This church has played a crucial role in the university academic and ceremonial life ever since. The church tower, added in 1608, has gained a reputation for providing stunning 360-degree panoramic views of the city. To fully experience these magnificent views, visitors are required to climb 123 steps. That's a lot of steps to reach the top of the tower. It's worth noting that these steps are quite narrow, which may make the climb a bit challenging for some individuals. However, the breathtaking views at the top definitely made the climb worthwhile. While entry to the church is free, there is a small fee for accessing the tower and tickets can be purchased at the gift shop, which is inside the church. Even if you choose not to go up to the tower, Great St Mary's Church is still worth a visit for its stunning architecture and rich history. Number 8. Botanical Garden. The Botanical Garden is in the heart of Cambridge city centre. It is one of the most beautiful green spaces in Cambridge. It is home to over 8,000 species of plants from across the world and provides resources for researchers and lecturers at the university. It is a beautiful oasis that offers a getaway from the busy city. The garden's stunning landscapes and diverse range of plant species provide a peaceful and enjoyable experience. Whether you want to take a leisurely walk, relax and miss the picturesque gardens or simply appreciate the beauty of nature, a visit to the Botanical Garden is a must. Number 10. The Round Church. In Cambridge there are many churches worth visiting and one of them is the Round Church. It can be found on the corner of Round Church Street and Bridge Street. The Round Church is known to be the second oldest building in Cambridge and is said to have been inspired by the circular church in Jerusalem. Since 1950, it has been recognised as a Grade 1 listed building. Interestingly, it is one of the four medieval round churches still in use in England. You can enter the church by paying a small fee, but even if you decide not to go inside, the view from the outside is equally impressive and worth experiencing. Number 11 Parks if you visit Cambridge during the warmer seasons, I highly recommend you spend some time enjoying the city's beautiful green spaces. Cambridge truly is a green city. Riverside parks, grassy commons, cool meadows and flower-filled gardens shape the city as much as its history and heritage. One of the most well-known open spaces in Cambridge is Parker's Peace, located near the city centre and close to Mill Road. It's a lovely large green space where people often have picnics and engage in activities like football and cricket. This is where basic football association rules were formed in the 19th century. You will also find a single lamppost at the junction, known as Reality Checkpoint. Believed to be the city's oldest remaining electrical lamppost, dating back to around 1860. Jesus Green is another popular park in Cambridge. It becomes a vibrant hub of activity, especially during the warmer months. Visitors can enjoy facilities for tennis, table tennis, as well as areas for barbecues. The park also includes a skate park and a play area for children. A major attraction of Jesus Green is the Jesus Green Lido, an outdoor swimming pool which is open to the public. Cambridge has many beautiful and inviting parks, a truly green city. Its relatively small size means that whether you're in the mood to lie on the grass or go for long country walks, there's plenty of options available. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like, subscribe and comment.